This lecture is an introduction to drug receptor families and I will be covering briefly ligand gated ion channels, G protein coupled receptors, enzyme linked receptors, and intracellular receptors. Let's begin by looking at ligand gated ion channels. These are receptors that are found on cell membranes that are coupled to ion channels. These are, these are protein structures that permit ions such as sodium or potassium or chloride to move from the outside to the inside or from the inside to the outside of the cell. In this particular example, we have a sodium channel and the ligand is acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter. When acetylcholine is released by motor neurons, for example, in skeletal muscle, the acetylcholine binds to a site on the sodium channel receptor. When it binds to that site, it causes a conformation change in the channel structure, which then opens the channel up. And when it opens the channel up, sodium then is able to pass from outside the cell to the inside of the cell. And when sodium enters the cell, it causes depolarization. This is a very rapid response that occurs within milliseconds and is responsible for nerve conduction of, of action potentials and also for contraction of uh, skeletal muscle. A second type of receptor that is a member of the receptor family is what we call the G protein uh, coupled receptor. In this uh, particular illustration, I am showing a beta adrenal receptor, such as found in the heart, that is coupled to a GS protein. The ligand that binds and activates this receptor in the heart would be norepinephrine, the neurotransmitter from sympathetic nerves. When it binds to the external surface of the beta adrenergic receptor, that causes a conformation change that then leads to a dissociation of, these, of this complex of GS protein subunits. And this is triggered by binding of GTP to the alpha subunit and the release of GDP. This conformation change and dissociation leads to activation of the enzyme adenylate cyclase, which causes the hydrolysis of ATP to cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP then is a second messenger that then elicits a number of other effects in the cell. And in the case of the heart, this will lead to an increase in the force of contraction. This response, that is GS protein coupled, is very rapid. It occurs in a matter of seconds. In fact, there are multiple types of G proteins that are very important in pharmacology. We have the GS proteins that I just, ex that I just talked about. For example, these are found in the heart and um, ligands such as epinephrine and norepinephrine will bind to them bind to these GS proteins and stimulate the increase in cyclic AMP. We also have a GI protein, and these are inhibitory G proteins, and these are coupled to receptors that when ligands such as acetylcholine or adenosine binds to them, it causes an inhibition of the formation of cyclic AMP. And finally, there's a third type of G protein that we call the GQ protein, and these are these are receptors, coupled receptors, that activate an acetyl triphosphate, or the IP3 pathway. These are found in blood vessels, for example, as well as in the heart and many other tissues. And a variety of ligands, such as norepinephrine, angiotensin II, or endothelin I, can bind to these receptors, leading to an increase in intracellular IP3. So, with the GQ proteins, in contrast to the GS and GI proteins, the second messenger, rather than being cyclic AMP, is in fact the IP3, or an acetyl triphosphate. A third type of receptor are, is what we call enzyme-linked receptors. And the example I have here is a growth factor tyrosine kinase receptor. In this receptor, a ligand, whether it's a growth factor or could be insulin, what it does, when it binds to the receptor, the tyrosine kinase receptor, these receptor, this receptor then undergoes a dimerization, whereas these two sides come together. And what that does is to cause a phosphorylation inside the membrane of subunits, of, uh, of the beta subunit of the receptor. 
And this phosphorylation then can lead to intracellular effects. This particular type of receptor uh, usually requires minutes to hours in its response time. So it's far slower than, than ligand operated channels, receptors, or the G protein receptors. And finally, the, the last type of receptor is what we call intracellular receptors. In this case, the ligand needs to be a lipophilic ligand, meaning that it is, it's, it's soluble in, in fat. It's lip lipophilic, and so it can diffuse through the membrane, the lipid bilayer membrane, into the cytoplasm of the cell. Well, this ligand then can bind to a receptor that inside the cell is inactivated, and this may be a transcription factor, and then together these will enter the nucleus of the cell and can and this activated receptor complex then can lead to the transcription of DNA and ultimately into protein synthesis. This is a very slow response. It, it requires hours or days for the response to be complete because it's involving protein synthesis. In summary, ligands are small molecules such as neurotransmitters or drugs that bind to extracellular or intracellular receptors. And the activation of these receptors initiates a sequence of intracellular events. And that can be ion movement, it can be the production of second messengers like cyclic AMP or IP3, it can involve enzyme activation, it can involve protein synthesis. And these intracellular events then will then produce an intracellular response.